Hello, I'm James Hortop from Merlin Equipment. We're the UK distributors for Four River Battery. The Four River Batteries are a range of pure lead AGM technology batteries, and they're the highest quality batteries that we have been able to find on the market. This is a follow up video to one that we've posted fairly recently where we were talking about some of the differences internally within the battery. However, quite recently we had an instance with a, a customer that I wanted to bring to people's attention because it really highlights why the Four River batteries are something quite special. So I had a telephone call from a good friend of mine who had a friend with a boat um, who required a number of our DC 400 six volt batteries in series. It was for a large Fleming 76 motor yacht. So he phoned me up and he ordered 12 of these and uh, installed one on his boat. Absolutely fine, very happy. He went away um, over the Christmas period and uh, left the boat for about six weeks. And unfortunately, much to his disappointment, he came back to the boat and uh, found that he'd left one of the inverters on and the batteries were sat down at two volts. So considering he'd just spent many thousands of pounds with us, it was a disastrous situation. Now normally with most batteries, if that occurs, the batteries are toast, they're finished, you have to replace the battery bank. However, I was able to work with that customer and we recovered that battery bank. And now that boat is actually en route uh, from the Mediterranean back here to the UK with that same battery bank and it's working absolutely fine. So we're going to demonstrate that uh, in a video that's actually going to take us about two or three weeks to make. So this is day one. What we're going to do is we're going to take one of our Four River DC series batteries, which is a pure lead deep cycle AGM battery, and we're going to take an off the shelf conventional AGM non pure lead battery. We're going to discharge both of those batteries to a very low level, to about two or three volts for the whole battery. We're then going to leave the battery for two weeks. That will allow the battery to sulfate, and then we're going to see if we can recover them. So welcome to our workshop here in Exeter. This is where we're going to be testing the batteries. So on the test bench, we've got some fairly basic test equipment. Now, being experts in battery monitoring, you're probably wondering why we're not going to be using a battery monitor. And the reason for that is that we're going to be taking the batteries extraordinarily low, down to uh, 2.5 volts per block. Now, a battery monitor will shut off at 9 volts, so it's not going to be very useful for this. So what we're going to be using is an external multimeter. To discharge the batteries, we're going to be using this resistive load bank, which will connect to the batteries, turn it on, the voltage we will monitor until it reaches 2.5 volts, then we'll be switching it off and those batteries are going to be left um, for, in storage for two weeks. Now, today is the 24th of July, so we'll be returning on the 7th of August to try to recover them. Now, the batteries that we're actually going to use for this test, we've got a, um, a straight off the shelf lead calcium AGM battery, and then we have got one of our premium Fall River DC series pure lead batteries. So now we are going to connect the batteries up to the resistive load bank. So we're now connected. You'll see on the test rig we've got two resistive load banks, one's rated at 24 volt, the other one is actually rated at 12 volt, so I'm only going to use the 12 volt side and it's independently controlled just using this switch just here. Testing the battery voltage, this battery has come straight off the shelf, so it should be relatively well charged at about 12 and a half volts, 12.48 volts we've got there at the minute, which is fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply that load, which I'm going to do now. You can see with my clamp on ammeter, I put this on to amps. I'm pulling about 11 amps down from that battery. Let's have a look at the voltage. So under load, that battery is now at 12.1, and we're going to leave that. We're going to leave it now until that battery reaches two and a half volts. So we've been running for seven, eight hours now. Um, the battery voltage, as you can see from the meter, is down at 2.449, so it's a very, very low voltage indeed. It's so low, in fact, that I could put my hand on a resistive load bank and uh, it's only just warm. So, you know, that battery is, is, fully, is fully flat right now. So what we're gonna do is disconnect this battery and we're gonna put the other battery on to get it down at that same low voltage level.
Right, so we're ready to start the test. The first thing which we're going to do is test the voltage of that battery, which I'll just do now. So this one's actually in a better charge condition than the other one off the shelf, but it's newer. Um, it's 12.8 volts. So now what I'm going to do is start the load. Let's verify that we're actually discharging the battery. You see we've got 11, 12 amps now down from that battery. It's under load. Voltage has dropped down to 12.4. So now we're going to leave that again for seven or eight hours until we get down to 2.5 volts. So I've moved the batteries into the warehouse. They're now on our, one of our shelves. A couple of do not use, do not remove C. James stickers, which I'm going to place on those batteries. And we are going to leave those for two weeks. So today is the 24th of July, and let's see how those batteries look in two weeks' time. Hello. Well, we didn't quite do the batteries on the 7th of August, which is what we said. Um, it's actually the 11th of August today, and it's very hot. And as you can probably see from the sand tan, it's been a, been a very nice, warm August weekend. So our batteries have been sat in the warehouse now, uh, untouched, uh, with do not use stickers on them. And I'm now going to remove them, uh, put them over onto our test bench. We're going to have a go at recovering them. Okay. Back at the test bench, we've got our batteries ready to go. Very basic setup, multimeter, and this is a twin output power supply. Each one of the two outputs, we can independently change the voltage and we can current limit up to a maximum of four amps. So I've set this at 14.4 volts per channel and maximum current four amps. What we're going to do is we're going to attach them and we're going to leave it for a while and we're going to see whether the batteries rise. Once, after a couple of hours, if we can get the voltages up to about 11, 12, 13 volts, then I'm going to attach a standard battery charger. Now, there's a reason why we can't just attach a standard battery charger to these batteries. And the reason being is that the electronics within the battery charger are actually operated from the DC side of the circuitry rather than the AC side. So if you attach a battery that's only got six volts in it, um, the battery charger won't actually be able to fire up its own ele internal electronics. So we have to get that voltage up first, but also a very accurate voltage and a limited amount of current is what's needed just to get those batteries up um, initially during our recharge cycle. Okay, so let's connect those now. <clears throat> we can see. So this is the full river battery. So you can see we're now connected. It's not switched on yet. And then we're going to connect up our other battery. Okay, so connected, ready to go. The power supply is not actually switched on yet. Using the multimeter, we can just check what the voltages are. So you can see the voltage on a full river battery is actually up at 6.2 volts. Now that's quite impressive considering we'd discharged it down significantly lower than that but as a battery rests it will actually recover itself so much so that a battery's state of health can actually go up as well as down so the other battery is sat at a well, not very encouraging half a volt so we're going to switch the power supplies on now and what you'll see is you'll see the voltage drop and then hopefully the amount of current that the batteries pull will stay at four amps which means that they're actually starting to charge up so i'm going to turn the power on this is to the full river battery so you can see the voltage has dropped down to nine volts it's actually pulling four amps that's very encouraging and on the other battery let's put that on okay the voltage has barely dropped and it's not accepting very much but let's leave that for a while and let's actually see what occurs in a couple of hours time so we're an hour into charging now um we just come down to check the batteries just to make sure they're not getting too hot the conventional battery is still pulling the same amount of current i'm afraid so it's not showing any signs of life right now Full river battery is still accepting the full 20 amps. The battery charger is in bulk charge mode. And the casing of the battery, which is really important, isn't getting hot, it's not bulging. It's a very slightly warm, um, but you can see there's no, no issues going on with the caps opening or anything like that, which is great news so far. So what we're gonna do is leave it for another couple of hours. This should have then dropped into absorption charge mode. The current will start dropping off as it goes to its battery conditioning mode, and then once the batteries are fully charged, 
uh, we should see it go into float. And then once it's into float mode, we're going to do something called a carbon pile load test, which is where we put a very heavy load across the battery and we can actually see what current it can sustain. It gives us a good idea of the state of health of that battery. So we've been running for approximately two hours now. The battery charger has just reached 14.5 volts. It's just dropped itself into what we call absorption stage. I'd expect that to get up to about 14.8 volts and then you'll see the current start to drop back as the battery cannot accept any more current. Now the absorption stage is rather like a battery conditioning stage um, and it indicates to us that the battery is somewhere between 80 and 100% charged. Now it's only just made that change literally a few minutes before I started the uh, video recording. So I expect the battery is around sort of 80, 81% charged at the moment. Now the other battery unfortunately still isn't accepting any more current so I think that might be fully sulfated and of no use whatsoever but we'll wait and see. So a further hour in the battery charger is still in absorption stage the current has dropped off to about 5 amps there you go 5.1 amps running into the battery itself now the battery is quite warm um, I'd say it's about to touch about 40 degrees so it's, it's quite on the warm side, which is what you expect when the battery has been recharging from such a low level. But I think it's quite useful to see that there are no bulges in that battery case whatsoever and the caps are fully intact. Now on many a lesser battery, what you'd expect to see is the caps start to open up because the pressure within, within the battery is so high. Now with the Four River battery is that these have a sealed case and are epoxy sealed rather than heat sealed. So it means that the valves along the top of the battery can be set at a much higher PSI, which means the battery can withstand higher temperatures during extreme charging and recharging from uh, five volts open circuit voltage um, at 20 amps is extreme charging. So uh, the battery is doing quite well. So we're just going to wait until this gets back into the float mode. And once uh, the battery is in float mode, the battery will be 100% charged or certainly it will have taken 100% of the the charge that it can take. So several hours later the battery charger is now on float 13.6 volts We've got just over an amp going into the battery. Uh, battery is warm but not hot and what we're going to do is it is fairly late in the evening uh, it is uh, 20 past five in the evening here so I'm going to turn the battery charger off we're going to leave that battery resting now overnight and then we're going to come back and check its voltage in the morning. So we finished charging the batteries last night, now we've left them overnight and uh, we're going to test the, test the voltage of those batteries just to make sure they're ready to be discharged. What we're going to do is do what's called a reserve battery capacity test. Now, at the moment the battery, the full of the battery is sat at 12.83 volts so it's, uh, it's absolutely fully charged. Now the other battery I don't think is going to be able to be part of the test because when you test the voltage we're only seeing 1.4 volts so I think it's fair to say that the non-pure lead battery is at the end of its life and it really needs to go to the recycling depot. So using the manufacturer's data for the full river 55 amp hour battery we can see that the reserve capacity for the battery at 25 amps is 96 minutes. That means the battery in top condition should be able to sustain a 25 amp load continuously for that 96 minutes. As we've seen from the data sheet, during a reserve battery capacity test, this battery should be able to sustain a 25 amp load for 96 minutes. So we've got our load bank here. These resistors will pull 25 amps. We've got our battery connected. Um, and during a reserve capacity test, after the 96 minutes is up, we should be seeing 10 and a half volts. So if the battery voltage after 96 minutes or at 96 minutes is 10.5 volts and above, it has passed the test. If it's below 10.5 volts, it has failed the test. So the time now is half past nine. 96 minutes from now would be six minutes past 11. So let's leave that running and we're gonna return in 96 minutes time. Just as a matter of Checking the voltage to start with. It's 12.7 volts, switching on. Sustaining 12.2 at this time. So let's leave that. 
and it's come back in an hour and a half. So we've returned back to the batteries now to test them. Um, the clock showing just after 11 o'clock. So using our multimeter, let's have a quick look at what the voltage is. So you can see there we're at 10.56 volts. Now, considering that battery has been discharged, it's been left in a discharge condition of what, four or five volts for the best part of three or four weeks, and it's recharged very quickly and being bought uh, back within a cycle test, I think that's pretty impressive. But very importantly, this is not a standard AGM battery. This is a pure lead battery. You cannot do this with a standard AGM battery. It has to be pure lead. So this battery, after we've done some pretty horrendous things to it, is still passing the reserve capacity test. Now what I'm gonna do just as the, the last thing is I'm gonna put it back on charge and just make sure it charges back up to 100%. So I'm plugging the battery back into one of our KISS A20 amp four stage smart battery chargers. And if I plug it in now, if we uh, zoom in on the, on the front panel of the, of the battery charger, we'll see it fire up. Okay, so we're in AGM mode, channel one, which is what's connected to this battery. Here's the battery voltage. And you can see we've got 20 amps running in to that battery. So it shows again that that battery is accepting charge and it's basically working as normal. So thank you very much indeed for watching this video. It's taken several weeks to put together. And just to recap, we've taken one of our pure lead AGM four river batteries um, and an ordinary AGM battery. We've discharged them. We've left them in a very discharged state for, for weeks. Um, the four river battery we were able to recover with a power supply uh, initially and then put a, a, a three stage smart battery charger on there. Now, I think this goes to prove that all AGM batteries are not the same. The only batteries that we've been able to recover have been the pure lead technology batteries. Now, Four River is available in both an engine starting range called Full Throttle and the Four River DC Deep Cycle series. And the real difference with them is that the batteries have a full five year warranty. They can be discharged, they can be recovered. If you'd like to know more about Four River, if you go onto our website, www.merlinequipment.com, you can download our white paper called The Differences in the Detail. That will actually tell you the physical um, differences between one of our Forever AGM batteries and an ordinary AGM battery. We're also looking for distributors. So if you'd like to be a distributor for Forever within the specialist vehicle, the marine, the off-grid market, or the mobility market or industrial market, please give us a call 01202 697979. Um, or if you have a boat or a vehicle you're looking for a new range of batteries and you want the very best, give us a call. We'd be very happy to help you. If you find yourself in the southwest out here in Exeter, please feel free to come and see us as well. Our showroom is open Monday to Friday. Thank you for watching.